just confirmed what I'm going to preach about tonight. Amen. You may be seated. I got another blessing. I was, Brother Terry and Sister Maria found me a beautifully, wonderfully, lovely desk over there. It's just perfect. But I got blessed. I didn't have to help pack it in. <laughs> the impetus of this, behind this message tonight, this message has been brewing in my spirit for a while. I've been privileged to attend the funeral of many friends family, and acquaintances. And I've learned something while listening to many preachers from many different backgrounds and many different walks of life. And the one thing that I've learned, that in, in the mind of the world today, everybody is going to heaven. I have several friends on Facebook who have lost loved ones. Some are related, some friends. The common factor, including some who have taken their own life or have been involved in other nefarious activities. And I have read both at the time of their passing and many times on the anniversary of their passing that they are in heaven. Now, nothing I say here tonight has anything to do with someone who has passed away. As we all know, I nor you are their judge with regard to heaven or hell. And to place them in either place. I want you to hear me right now. If I, if I stand up and tell you that somebody went to hell, I would be accused of being a judge. I would be belittled and I would be downed and being told I've stepped out of my place. But if I stand up here and declare that they went to heaven, people will clap their hand and amen and okay with me. And there's no, there's no difference. The Bible clearly states that as a tree falleth, so shall it lie. And refer with regard to passing from this life, whatever has been done has been done, and nothing anyone says or does can affect that. My focus tonight is on the living. I had to promise I wouldn't get cranked up tonight, but Lord forgive me if I do. My focus today is on the living. Are there those among us who think that they, what they have is going to save them when it may not save them? Are there those among us who have no religious or spiritual experience whatsoever, but they still plan on going to heaven following their final day on earth? We can talk to a number of people. You can line them up by the hundreds. And you might have one knucklehead out of a thousand that would say, I'm going to hell. But everybody's going to heaven. The title of my message tonight is, Everybody Won't Go to Heaven. Don't think or say or even, even act like you think I'm judging because I'm not. Because as I have been known to do, and if the Lord will let me keep my right mind, I will always do, Brother Billy, is I will go to the Word of God. I will go to the Word of God and see what it says. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14 says, Enter ye, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, everybody say many. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few. Everybody say few. few. There be that find it. Two ways. Two gates. What is clear brother Rice. Is Jesus is speaking to people that are interested in him. 
He is speaking from a religious perspective, if you will. According to Matthew 5, which is the beginning of this Sermon on the Mount, He is speaking to disciples or students or learners is what it's referred to. He is not speaking necessarily to sinners, although no one has received the Holy Ghost yet. Everything Jesus preached was focused toward the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Remember John's prophecy. He said, there cometh one after me who's mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That, my friends, is the introducer to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. John the Baptist was born to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And his introduction was, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That was Jesus' introduction to the world. The reason for His coming was to be the way. To blaze the trail by which every man, woman, boy, or girl might come, which is the way of the cross. He died, was buried, and rose again. There were different ways back then. Just as there are now. Even in Christianity. Along with paganism. Remember Paul's admonition, Galatians 1 chapter 6, Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 through 9. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert, my God help me, would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 through 4 says, Would to God you would bear with me a little in my folly. And indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the... My Lord, help me, Jesus. God have mercy that your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he... Come on, Holy Ghost, help me in the name of Jesus. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Brother McKinney, there was different ways even in Paul's day. There were people that already, Brother David, had perverted the gospel of Jesus Christ and had begun to preach it in a more user-friendly and in a more easy way. They had begun to try to manipulate the gospel of Jesus Christ and in fact, according to Paul's writing, had made it more complicated than it ever was before. It is clear, it is clear from Jesus' teaching that there are more than one way that folks will try to come. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus also said, if you come any other way, you're the same as a thief and a robber. The easy or broad way, which which hints at no restriction. And the straight or narrow way. That word straight, Brother David, comes from the Greek word stenos, which according to one Bible dictionary means uh, that which is seen, you only comprehend it in groaning. While it is not explicit what that entails, it is clear that 
finding a walk with God, finding a place in God, pursuing salvation with God involves effort as opposed to that which is supposed to be easy. I want you to hear me right now. Although, Although the gift of the Holy Ghost is easy to receive. Getting yourself in a place where you're ready to receive the Holy Ghost is not always easy. The wide or broad or easy gate and way is one that many will find. The narrow way or straight way, the way that is only seen through groaning, through effort, through pursuit, will be found by few. The word find denotes a searching. One will have to search for both ways. The easy way or the the straight way, the more restricted way, will have to be searched for both like and like. Let's go back to the book. Remember, I'm preaching everybody. Everybody won't go to heaven. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I'm bad wanting to get out there amongst you. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will, but he that doeth, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many. There's that word again. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never, everybody say never, knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Read closely with me. Notice closely with me in the scripture. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. That word Lord comes from the Greek word kurios. And it is an adjective which describes one having power or authority. Vine's Expository Dictionary says that Christ Himself assumed the title of Lord. And after Thomas' declaration of my Lord and my God upon seeing Jesus for Himself after the resurrection, this word was never used to describe anyone but God or Jesus. So that Scripture says that these are people that say, Lord, Lord, that recognize Him in His power and His authority. So who will be counted among those that call Him Lord? Jesus is speaking not of the murderer, the liar, the thief, the rapist, the whoremonger, but Jesus is speaking of church-going folk. Folks that believe to some degree and aspire to the Christian ethic, Brother Robbie, which namely is that Jesus was the Christ or is the anointed one. Notice, many will say, have we not prophesied, or that word would be better rendered in our more modern language, preached. Have we not prophesied or preached in your name? And we have cast out devils in your name. Done many wonderful works in your name. 
I just got to take a little side note there, Brother McKinney. How is it that so many people do so many things in the name of Jesus, but when it comes to baptism, they want to go into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Have we not prophesied in your name? And we have cast out devils in your name. We have done many wonderful works in your name. And then, after they give their testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ, He will profess to them, I never... I never, I never knew you. That presents a conundrum, ladies and gentlemen. So apparently, they have continued in what they have been doing. But G- and they think, they think that what they're doing, Brother McKinney, is good enough. I hope you stay with me tonight. I hope you stay with me. I feel like that this sermon could revolutionize our church. So apparently they have continued in what they have been doing. But Jesus will say unto them, I never knew you. How is it? Notice this. In John, you don't have to go there, Brother Shannon. I'm going to hit these quick. In John 1 and 48, when Jesus meets Nathaniel for the very first time to prove his anointed authority and power and who he was, he told Nathaniel, when you were under the fig tree talking to Philip, I saw you. When Jesus met the woman at the well in John chapter number 4, he tells her, go get your husband. She said, I have no husband. Jesus said, you speak rightly, you have no husband. But you have had five husbands, and the one you're shacked up with now is not your husband. Acts 17 and 26, Paul's revelation on Mars Hill. He says, It hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Remember in Jeremiah chapter number 1, he told Jeremiah, Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. So how will he tell them I never, never knew you. He doesn't say, I knew you, but we broke up. He doesn't say, I knew you, but we fell out. He doesn't say, well, I think maybe we used to be acquainted, but we're not anymore. Brother Robbie, he says, I never knew you. Let's go to Galatians chapter number 2, verse number 7. If you have your Bibles, please follow along with me. If you don't, please notice the scriptures. This is very important. I, I just got to tell you something. I just got to tell you something. It's not only time, but it's high time. Brother, Brother Billy, if I'm going to be a preacher, I'm going to be a truth preacher. If I'm going to be a a good preacher, a preacher of Jesus Christ, Brother Pete, I'm going to preach it the straight way, the right way. What you got to do to make it to heaven, according to the book. This is not an option. This is the way. This is not one of many. Just get whatever suits you. This is the way. And I've got to preach it. And I've got to preach it hard. And I've got to preach it straight. And I've got to preach it rich. And I've got to preach it right. I cannot doctor it down. I cannot soap it up. I cannot pretty it up. I've got to preach it raw and open just like Calvary was. He shed His life's blood. He was naked and wounded and bore our iniquities and our transgressions. And it was ugly. But it's the most beautiful thing the world has ever known. (laughs) 
These scriptures that I'm going to read to you right now. I'm not taking them out of context. But there are particular parts of them that I want to point your attention to. That's why it's important that you stay with me. But contrary wise. When they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me. That's Paul speaking. The uncircumcision is the Gentiles. As the gospel of the circumcision, which is a term often referred to as the Jews. As the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Now the Bible is very clear. That on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter preached the message of salvation to the Jews. Uh, in Acts chapter number 8, Peter preached the message of salvation to the Samaritans. Uh, and in Acts chapter number 10, Peter preached the message of salvation to the Gentiles. And it was the same message. But Peter had some issues. He could not be sold out completely to the Gentile world. So rooted was he in, in Judaism and so rooted was he in his past and his history that he, it was not his... God, help me right now. I could preach. Lord have mercy. It was not his calling. It was not his ministry. It was not his definite purpose by God. The Lord said in Acts chapter the ni number 19, I believe it is, or Acts chapter number 22, that, that the Lord called Paul out of being a murderer, out of being a persecutor, out of being a tormentor, to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And his words was to carry the gospel to the world is committed unto Paul. Get myself back together here. Galatians 2 and 20. I want you, you got to stay with me now. You have got to stay with me. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live... Which tells us there was a life he used to live. But with the coming in of the crucifixion, there was a change. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Crucified with Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the death. Galatians 3, 26 and 27 for ye, Lord, have mercy. My God, my God, my God. Y'all going to make me have to go nuts. I was just hoping I'd get up here and preach and y'all would get your praise on. Get the fire burning up in you. But I got to get out here and tell you, look what the Bible said. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Next verse. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I am crucified with Christ, but yet I live. As many as of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's the burial. Galatians 3 and 2. This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Galatians 3 and 14. That the blessing of Abraham... Oh, God, help me. My Lord. Well, Brother Rice, I could be here till in the morning. That the blessing of Abraham. What's the blessing of Abraham? Your children shall be as the stars in the heaven. And as the sand on the seashore. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be. You want to know why we give money to missions and why we've been giving more money to missions? Because in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. I've got the Holy Ghost within me. I've got the Spirit of God Almighty within me. And according to the Scripture, the promise of Abraham has come upon me. Therefore, it is my obligation. It is my responsibility to make an impact worldwide.
I have to go back to the hospital tonight, I probably have to have somebody else take me because I'm being a doghouse. Can I get carnal for just, uh, just a, a portion of a second and then I'll go back to walking in the Holy Ghost? As I was in the shower tonight, and I, I promise you, I'm weak as a cat. My head's spinning. It, it, I just ain't got any sense being here. But there was a song, and it ain't all that spiritual of a song. So you're just going to have to to just bear with me, that kept going over my mind. Because Amanda told me I probably needed to stay home. Mama told me I probably needed to stay home. Then Mama called Aunt Tina, tried to tattletale on me, and Aunt Tina told Mama to tell me he needs to stay home. <laughs> or at least not preach. And then Mama got mad at me because I told her I'm preaching anyway. She didn't really get mad at me, but I could tell her Mama's voice was on. And there's a song kept going through my mind by the esteemed prophet and troubadour Conway Twitty. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> what I do is I try to help you folks make it to heaven. And I read in the Bible, and I want you to hear me right now. If you have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and what I'm preaching tonight doesn't break your heart, you need to pray through again. Because, Sister Eloise, everybody is not going to make it. They're not going to make it. Oh, we like the pie in the sky. We like to tell it, well, everybody. No, no, they're not all going to make it. And there's a whole bunch of them that think they are. Oh, no, I'm not damning and condemning nobody's religion. I'm not down talking nobody. I'm trying to tell us. Uh, I'm trying for something to get in our spirit, uh, something to get in our mind, uh, and something to get in our hearts, Brother Billy. If they don't hear it, uh, it'll be our fault. Because that's our job. That's what we do. You shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. To the utter, uttermost parts of the earth. Even New Madrid, Missouri. Even Tally. Even Liberty, Even Hiredville. Even Marston. Even East Spring. Kiwani, LaForge. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive, oh my God help me. Oh, we're about to have some church up in here. That we might receive the Spirit, the promise of the Spirit. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Galatians 4, 8, 9. Remember, Brother McKinney, we're trying to find out how can a God that knows everybody tell somebody, I never knew you. Get this. This is the book now. This message is full of scriptures. I ain't got much of me in it tonight. Galatians chapter 4, verse number 8, 9. How be it then when you knew not God you did service unto them 
which by nature are no gods. Meaning, when you didn't know the Lord, you served the devil. Say, well, I was good. Doesn't make any difference. When you don't know him, you serve the flesh, which is the instrument of hell. But now... Y'all better be glad I don't feel good tonight. But now, but now, Brother Billy, but now, Sister LaDonna, but now, Sister Connie, but now, Miss Francis, but now, Lacey, but now, after that ye have known God, or... Or rather, are known of God. They don't just know Him, He knows them. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? We got to realize that the Galatian church received the Holy Ghost as Paul preached it. After believing the preaching of Paul, they received the Holy Ghost. But then a group known as Judaizers, they came and tried to convince the Gentiles that they must follow the law in addition to what they received under Paul's teaching in order to be saved. But remember how Paul introduced himself to the Galatian church. If I or an angel from heaven come preaching any other Than that which ye have heard. I've already proven to you on many occasions the gospel of Paul was simply the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe by scripture I've proven to you what it means or what is required to be known by God. It is to be born into his family. It is to take on his name. Our mission, let's stand. Our mission, saints of God, is to introduce Jesus to those not that don't know Him. We like to go through the world, want to introduce them to Jesus, the one, to introduce to Jesus the ones that don't know Him. But it ain't knowing Him that's the, that's the, the critical point. It's Him knowing you. It's Him knowing you. So our mission, saints of God, is to not introduce people to Jesus. It's to introduce Jesus to them. The first thing you have to do is you've got to receive it for yourself. I don't care how knowledgeable you are in the Scripture. I don't care how, how much of a history you have. Your grandma, your great-grandma, your great-great-grandma. you got four cousins and 12, 12 nephews and whatever living for God. If you don't have it for yourself, you don't know what you're talking about. The second step can be defined by Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. You don't have to go there either, Brother Shannon. I know this one by heart. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The third step is introduce Jesus and somebody else that they might know him for themselves. And there's only one way to do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm done after this. There's only one way to do that. That is the likeness of his death, 
his burial, and his resurrection. Listen to this, Brother Billy came to me yet last night as I was studying. Because in, we're in the likeness of his death, burial, and resurrection. In his death, we take on his mission, which was Calvary. In his burial, we take on that name. And in his resurrection, we take on his spirit. So all of those people that are in churches all across the world, and I'm not singling anyone out. The United Pentecostal Church is not the only organization that preaches truth. I heard a story one time, I think I've related it to you, but I'll tell it to you again. We started up a mission field on a remote island, Brother Billy. The missionary said, Sister Maria, that when they showed up there, they were ready to preach the gospel to all the natives. What they didn't know was there was one of those natives, Brother Billy, that had found a Bible laying in the middle of the jungle. And he began to study the Bible and believe that repentance, water baptism, in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost was the plan of salvation. And Brother Robbie, he thought he was the only one in the whole wide world that had the revelation. One, one, one. <laughs> Brother Rice, that's how we came up. That's how we came up. Brother Robbie, that's what we're built on. One, one, one. One way to God. One, one, one. Baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with the Spirit. One way to God. Filled with His Spirit. One way to God. I, I want to be nice and I want to be cordial and I want to be friendly, but the Bible tells me, I want everyone under the sound of my voice to hear this right now. The Bible tells me that not everybody's going to heaven. As a matter of fact, Sister Mary, the Bible says many are going to be told I never knew you. So here's what you do. And I'm fixing to open the altar up. I'm still trying my best to preach us out of having altar calls. They're not in the Bible. Altar calls are not in the Bible. I said altar calls are not in the Bible. The invitation is not in the Bible. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting in. There appeared to them clothed in tongues like the fire that set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible also says in Acts chapter number 10, while Peter yet spake these words, uh, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. The altar calls are not in the Bible. So we got to stop teaching people that they got to wait till a certain time to come pray. When you feel conviction pull at your heart, when you feel the Lord speak into your heart, I'm through preaching. Because the mission is accomplished. There are 3,116 people in the city of New Madrid. We're not even meeting the minimum requirement till we have 312 people filled with the Holy Ghost in our church. Everybody's not going to heaven. What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? The first and easiest thing that we can do, and I want you to hear me right now, 
is make up in our minds as an individual that every time that this carcass walks through those doors, I'm having blowout church. Say, well, I don't feel good. He's still God. Say, I'm sick. He's still pouring out the Holy Ghost on people. He's still saving, delivering, and healing. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Where in the world, maybe I shouldn't have had you stand, but I want you to stay standing. I've been standing a long time. Where in the world did we get it at that we can't bug people? How many of you know somebody that testified and said, I said I was never going to that church, but they wouldn't stop inviting me. They wouldn't stop telling me about Jesus. When you go home, you call your children. When you walk out to your car at the same time as your neighbor does. Have I told you what you got to be saved? In case I hadn't told you, do you got about two or three minutes? Let me tell you what the Bible says. I remember when I moved back to New Madrid. Matthew and I moved us a couple of times. We went to back and forth to Louisiana twice in one day, Brother Pete. We had a lot of time together. And he asked me, he said, don't tell me that, I, that I'm going to regret seeing you coming every time. And you know what, Brother David? I did what he wanted. But you see, Brother Mark, I know that it's a matter of heaven or hell. And, and the Bible tells me that everybody ain't going to heaven. So it's my job to take as many with me as I humanly possibly can. It's my job. It's my job. Say, well, I don't get out much. You get out once in a while. You got groceries. You go to Walmart's. You go to the dollar store. You go get a bite to eat. If not, you got a phone. But if you have a loved one that's lost, it's your responsibility to reach them. Because everybody ain't going to heaven. That's a fact. I'm nobody's judge. Brother Billy, that's what the book says. Say, well, they get mad at me. Go park your car around the block. Walk into their front yard while they're sleeping and plead the blood of Jesus all the way around their house. Say, I, I don't know about that. We got to get radical. We got to get radical. Drive around their block. Drive around their block. Drive around their block. Instead of cruising town, cruise their block and call their name out in the name of Jesus. I've been praying for people all over this city, Sister Maria. I started trying to pray for people that I knew, Brennan, and before you know it, I'd pray for every house on the street. Please, please, the Lord has been dealing with me very strongly that we have been too feeling based. We have been too emotional based. It ain't about how I feel. It's about what the truth is. But now, but now, after that you have known God, or rather, are known of God. How did I get to be known by Him? Well, it's like this. I'll never forget. Woo. I'll never forget when that pretty red baby came out. And his mama had been pushing so hard and so long that the top of his head was like a cone right up here. 
But when he come out squalling, he was the most beautiful human being on the face of planet Earth. <laughs> and I knew him. I knew him. I did not have to get to know my little tripper. Brother Rice, I knew him. He was mine. And they've come along, little garrison. Brother Pete, I knew him. It's like he's always been there. And then my little baby girl. I knew her. As soon as they put her little fat bottom in my arms. I knew her. The way he knows you is you get born into his family. You become. You become his child. By virtue of the new birth. These altars are open. 